Uh, hello again. So, uh, we're just going to be doing some PQA development. Um, let me show you what I got so far. To do juggle panic too. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's over. Boom. Uh, this is PQ8. So, ooh, it looks so ugly at the moment. Get rid of you. Ba ba ba. Um, so what I have at the moment is this is the title screen. I need to do the title. Obviously, it's not looking too good. Um, I have this little mode select because there's going to be lots. I'm hoping there's going to be lots and lots of modes to choose from that add some variety to the game. Um, and then when you press Z or X or whatever button, we're, I'm going to have controllers um, at the showcase on March 9th. Uh, when then you get down to the actual gameplay portion, which is you have these two little silly silhouettes that can throw balls. And then in the actual game, the first one to drop five balls loses, and the other person wins. And that's the entire game. Very simple. Um, what I need to do, there's lots of things that need to be done to improve this. Um, but we're at a good we're at a good start. The one thing is uh, very important to gameplay is. I want it so that when players throw balls back and forth a bunch, it gradually speeds up. It starts out very slow, and then it speeds up and up and over time. We need to do that. Um, we also need... Oh, God, that's such an ugly title. Maybe we need to fix that. And then... Yeah, those are good things to work on. Let's work on the ball speed one. I think that one... Or is that one critical to gameplay? Do, do, we need ball spawning. We also need to control when balls spawn, because right now they spawn like two balls every second, spawning too much. We also need to do that. But let's do, yeah, let's handle that. And let's think about how we actually want these to work. I'm just going to do some typing while I design this out. Um. So we're going to want to spawn two balls at the start, one for each player. Let's do this in a... Oh, what happened to you? Uh, spawn thoughts. Um... How oh, should ball spawning? This is kind of a way. This is something I do to keep on topic, um, and not lose my train of thought. Is to make it very, very easy to to not lose my train of thought. How should ball spawning work? That's the question we're trying to answer. At the start of the game, spawn one ball for each. Play. Oop. Um. And then they'll throw them back and forth. I did this, I did some of this, and uh, I'm actually, this is like, I built Juggle Panic in a day, and it was coded super, super grossly, so I'm trying to rebuild it all right now, and which I'm using as an opportunity to actually also rethink a lot of the systems, try to build something even better than what I started with. Um, so... Ideally, at the start of the game, spawn one ball for each player, and then they'll then they'll grab them and maybe they'll toss them across. Um, if ever there are no balls left, spawn spawn two more, one for each player. Do do. -do. If what are the other situations? Well. If a player is hogging the balls, which means they have more balls than the other player and they haven't thrown any across. So I wanna, I don't wanna like, 
actively penalize players for being ball hogs or anything. I just I kind of want to do a more nuanced way of handling that. So if one player is hogging the balls, they've picked them up, let's say this situation, let's say that the other player doesn't have any balls and I'm just going back and forth and not, not sharing my balls at all, then for a bit, then spawn a ball for the other player. Yeah. And then I'll help to even things out. Um, what if... What if both players are being ball hogs? No balls are going across. And they have the same number of balls. Well, let's say... Um, if... There are less than six... Three balls on a side. And... No balls have grown across for a bit. Spawn a ball on the side with less balls. Slash with fewer balls. So now I also want to handle the case if, if players are just like, let's say, the left player and the right player both just have one ball and they're just kind of sitting on it and they're just kind of weaving back and forth and not really throwing it they're waiting for the other person to throw the ball i think i want to spawn i want to spawn more balls to sort of up the ante to say well now there's two balls maybe you want to do like a deadly volley across now and also the game has a mechanic where if you're holding two balls two balls you're slowed down and if you're holding no or just one ball, you're a little bit faster. So if we spawn more balls on their side, then it's, and then they pick them up, it's sort of like this thing of, well, now things are really tense because if the, the other player throws their ball, you don't have the mobility. And also if the other player throws their ball, you're already holding two balls. What are you going to do? You got to throw one of them. So, okay. Here's what we'll do. And I'm writing this out in kind of pseudo Cody way because this might be how we code it. If no balls have been thrown across for a bit, spawn a ball on the side with fewer balls. If both sides have the same number of balls, spawn a ball on each side. And that kind of, I think that just generally If one side has fewer balls than the other, spawn a ball on the side with fewer balls. If both sides have the same number of balls, spawn a ball on each side. So that kind of handles the situation of there's kind of a, a standstill where no one's throwing balls across. What do we do? We want to up the ante either to even things out, give the player who doesn't have any balls something to play with, or to up the ante on both sides and say, well, now there's three balls on each side deal with it um maybe now you'll do something uh the other situation is what if players are like actively throwing a ball back and forth really fast that kind of resolves itself in that um and that the I want it so that when you throw a ball back and forth a lot, the speed picks up more and more over time. Um, so eventually they'll just drop the ball and one player won't catch it. But I think I might want to like, even in this like volley of people throwing balls across, I think I might want it to still some, have some, have some intrigue and like spawn some balls anyway. Yeah. So, if no ball, if some balls have been thrown across recently, um, for anyone who's just watch, joining now, I am just planning out a mechanic that we're gonna build during this stream. So I'm just kind of thinking through it. This is a good thing to do whenever you're designing a game and kind of want to program something this 
is a good little instruct way to form an instruction manual for yourself or a roadmap. Um, so if some balls have been thrown across recently, then I want to spawn balls anyways. So we could just just spawn a ball every now and then anyway. Huh. Spawn a ball every now and then. On whose side? Let's say alternating sides. First one player, then the other. Every now and then. Yeah. This is how ball spawning should be should work. Okay. Let's get back to the game programming. So I have it when you start the game. Two ball spawn. That's good. Ball spawning. Let's go to our ball spawner code. So how is it how does it know how to spawn balls? It frames alive too. So this code means every 50 frames whenever the frame counter is divisible by 50 which is every 50 frames spawn a ball that's what it's doing right now i don't really want that um of course this will mean that when we start the game there will be no ball spawns and i do want balls to spawn at the start so i'm gonna have it be when the game is initialized and kind of like we drop down from the title scene into the actual gameplay, um, I think so. That's that's when it should start by spawning two balls. So let's just start with that. If self dot frames five equal hundred, let's say, then self spawn ball. Two. So after the ball spawner has been alive or has existed for 100 frames, then it will spawn the ball. Let's see if that feels right. A little long. Tune that down. Boom, boom. So players near the game will get a chance to walk around. Yeah, that seems right. So 80 frames after the game starts. Two balls will be spawned, random colors. That seems that seems fine. And then once once these are gone, well, so I, I have it kind of in a debug mode where you only need to score one hit to win the match, but it really should really be five hits. Let's find the place where I'm doing that. Greater than or equal to one. So if Either per player's score track has more than one or more marks end the game. I want to change this to five. And then the game won't end immediately. Let's test this out. Great. Yes. Try to get two. Um. Great, so now the game will end immediately when I'm debugging. Perfect, perfect. Now I want to, let's handle the case, if there are no balls on screen, if all the balls have died, then I need to spawn two, two more balls. Let's do that. Where should we check for that? <laughs> let's go to our update code. <laughs> or let's go to well, here's the ball class and then we have balls that hit the ground die so this is the code that kills the ball you can see self dot die so the ball will die when it hits the ground um these are all effects related to getting that mark to appear. To add mark, adds that mark to the player score track who's dropped the ball. Dropped the ball. And what was I doing in here? So here is where I could do, or actually, no, it should be here. When, when a ball dies, at the end of that frame, it will be removed from the game. And I want to, if, Balls if scene equals game and balls less 
equal to zero then so if we're still playing the game and there are no balls on screen then i need to spawn two more balls uh -huh. let's so uh, let's do jugglers of one um dot spawner spawn ball Jug jugglers two Spawner. Spawn. Ah. Great. Yes, it works. Whew. They spawn immediately. I wonder if I want that. I think I do. To kind of keep up the pace of the game. Let me just try that again. So everyone throws their balls, they all die. It does happen really fast though. Hmm. What about this? What if the spawn ball function took a little longer? I think that would be better. Spawn ball. Under ball. Do do do. So we can accomplish this by having if it's holding a ball, gradually rise. Ooh. Yeah. Ball is taken, gradually fall. So now it will rise out of the ground slower. Very slow. Hmm. Wait, I didn't didn't even see. <laughs> yeah. So now balls rise out of the ground slower. Both of these die. And I kinda do want it to be a, a bit of a hectic game, so one player might not even realize that more balls have spawned before the other player has had a chance to throw them. But I think that's sort of fine. Maybe it's not. How would I delay this? How would I delay this? One ball dies. Nah, let's just leave it for now. Let's just leave it for now. So with this, now we need to handle the, the case. Oops. Now we need to handle the case of if nothing, no balls have been thrown across for a while. If, like, let's say that this player here with the yellow ball just kind of kept it and held it forever. Then the player on the right really doesn't have anything to do. That's not really that fun for them. So, what we need to do is we need to keep track of how many balls spawn a fly across the middle of the screen. And if that hasn't happened for a while, then spawn another ball on the side with fewer balls. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So then, what we can do is we can keep a counter. Oh, cool. Uh, what was the word I used for? Oh, no. What was the word I used for? Stand up. Wow. It was a standstill. It was a magic card. Standstill. Frames. We initialize a counter called standstill frame. And then what will happen is if that, if that gets to, let's have it be a number. And if it ever reaches zero, we need to spawn a ball. And then, whenever a ball is thrown across, we increment the counter. So it sort of resets it, where a standstill frames as a counter that's gradually depleting, and if it ever gets to zero, we'll spawn another ball. But as it's depleting, if a ball gets uh, a ball gets thrown across the midpoint, then we'll just reset that up, and it'll start falling again. So that kind of handles the case. And then, if we ever if standstill frames ever gets to zero and we spawn a ball, then we also set it back up. Because we don't want to spawn a ball every single frame after that. Bum, bum, bum. Do this. You should be lower. 
And then we won. Cancel frame. Let's put you with the other frame thing. Do -do. Um, let's say, let's just say it's 300. I don't know. And then on update. Stand still frames equals decrim encounter. Stand still frames. This is a helper method that does a bunch of nice junk for me. It makes sure that it doesn't go below zero. And if it goes below zero, it, it triggers a little thing that I can read off of. So, um, listen. Ugly noise. Uh, so that's what decrement counter does. So we're, we're lowering that counter. And then, oh yeah, if, then when we get to zero, so let's see, spawn a ball if there is ever a standstill. Huh? So if standstill frames less than or equal to zero, then um, we want to spawn a ball. You want to spawn a ball on the side with your ball, so we're going to need to count. Local. Balls per player equals boom. Um, for each balls function, ball. And so for each ball, if ball.x is less than midpoint, then Balls per Let's do this. Zero is zero. Plus equals one. Else, balls per player two plus equals one. So now this little loop should count up the number of balls on each player's side. And if balls per player one equal two then spawn a ball on each side if they the same number wait is that what i want to do let's go back to our thoughts no balls have been spawned for yeah spawn a ball on each side great spawn ball on each side the same number of bum, bum, bum. um so then that would be accomplished with jugglers one dot spawner spawn ball jugglers two dot spawner spawn ball so i'm keeping the i'm calling the little like characters that you move around jugglers and each of them has their own sp ball spawner on their side that looks like this little chalice that rises out of the ground um so I'm getting to that object for each juggler, and then I'm calling the spawn ball method on it, which is what makes it rise up with a ball. Um, so spawn a ball on each side if they seem to wear balls, and then stands. Oh, wait. Let's just set. Let's just set that standstill frames back up to 300, which is 10 seconds. Might be too long. We'll see. Else, if balls. For player of one is less than balls player of two. So if um if the left player has fewer balls on their side than the right player, then we want to give them a ball. One does monitor on ball. Hmm, maybe we could accomplish this. Here we go. Let's let's finish this. Is greater than Jugglers is two spawn ball. So here's what we can do. I can just knock that off and if. So, and then change these to equal. So if the player on the left has fewer or the same number on the right, spawn a ball, ball for them. If the player on the right has fewer or the same number as the player on the left, spawn a ball for the right player. And then, yeah. Woo. Count. 
Number of ball each side. Great. Let's set this to 100. Mm -hmm. So, okay, bad. Bomb ball. Let's figure out where that is. Line 920. <laughs> oh yeah so tip if you i've set this up where i have objects that have the first argument as the object i'm calling it on so you can the way you do that is you can pass in the object to kind of refer to as the first argument or you can just use colons all the method what i've been doing. got the colons <laughs> So we should spawn spawn two balls at the start. Great. And let's see here. So the player on the right has two balls, so I spawn one for the player on the left. And they have two balls, which is good. Now they have the same number of balls. We spawn over both. Yes. Great. This seems to be working. Wow. Uh-oh. Oh. Can't. So this should only happen if. If. Queen. Game. Then. Um, should this happen during game start? No, it should just happen during the game proper. So let's go back. The way I keep track of like where my peak weight state is, you can kind of see in the upper left here, there's that ugly green text and it says seeing colon title. This is kind of how I ma uh, manage the overall state of it is I just keep track of the scene in a string. So if I press Z, you can see it transition to a new scene called title to game and then game start and then game. And if ever someone wins, you'll see that go to like, um sorry i'm just trying to get someone to win real quick Oop. and then once someone wins you'll see it go to game end and then game arrow title and then the title so that's kind of how and then that is just a simple variable i can look up to see what game state it is in overall at this point in time so when i updated this to just all happen during the scene equals game that's because like on the title screen i can't guarantee that there are any jugglers or any balls or any spawners so this this code is very specific to just um when the game is actually being played okay so then the question is what's the right uh oh well here's the thing i'm supposed to only do do this when there's a standstill, but right now it's just happening every 100 frames. So what we need to do is, if ever a ball goes across that midline, reset the standstill frames timer. So we can do that now. So I think the way to do that would be, whenever a ball is updating itself, it can check to see where it is at the start of the frame and where it at, is at the end of the frame. If the, that ever goes over the midpoint, then, that's when we reset the standstill timer. Let's go to the ball class. Let's go to its update method. Three frames greater than zero. Bounce off balls. So this is where apply velocity is where it actually moves. So let's do local prev x. x. Let's keep track of where it is now, and then it will move, which will change its x value. So we can see if one way we can check to see if the ball has crossed the midpoint is that will happen if the previous x is less than 64 and the x is greater than 64, or the other way around. And one way to check that would just be if prev x less than mid x is not equal. Self 
Um, the bar goes across the middle point. Good point. There's no standstill. So this will this will return true if ever self dot x and prev dot prev x are on different sides of the midpoint x. Then standstill frames equals one. I think I probably do one. Two, two. Let's load that up. And now I'm gonna test for a bit. See if, if I just keep throwing one ball across over and over again. This should not count as a standstill and no additional balls should be bond ever. Which I think this is this is perfectly fine the way it is. It looks like it's working. And then the real test is if I stop throwing it back and forth and wait a little bit, does this ball get spawned on the other person's side? Do that now. And 200, 200 frames is like six seconds. Still a little long. Felt kind of good. Um, try this. Try this again. I'm going to pay attention to how long about. So imagine this player on the left is teasing the player on the right. Saying, I got a ball and you don't got a ball. I came about the right time. I think I wanted to become a little bit faster. Pencil frames equals, let's do 180. Test that again real quick. Oops, sorry. Um, so player throws one across. You wait a little bit. Player on the right is teasing. Yeah, that's about right. Um, hmm. But here's the thing. Now they're. I kind of want to. If if due to a standstill, we spawn a ball. I want that. I want that to mean we'd wait even longer to spawn another ball because by spawning those balls due to a standstill, we kind of have made the game fair for the time being, and it's probably not going to be unfair within five more seconds. So I think we want to do this. Frames. Spawn a ball on each side. So let's set the standstill frames after we spawn a ball to something higher than that. Like maybe we can do. To 60. Seems like a good number, I don't know. Um now if uh if the players are throwing a ball back and forth and then they stop and one player is teasing the other again. Two then will spawn a ball for the player being teased, and now now the playing field is even. We shouldn't spawn more balls for a little bit longer. Maybe even a longer than that. Let's do 280. Just a little bit longer. And then when we set this to 180, we actually want it to. Ooh. Uh, we set. So when a ball goes across the middle point, right now we're setting standstill frames to 280 or 180. That might actually contradictory if, let's say, balls just spawned due to a standstill. And then right after that, player throws a ball across the midpoint. Um, then the standstill frames counter will go from 280 to 180, which means because a player threw a ball across the midpoint, it's a standstill will be counted sooner, which is contradictory. So what we want to actually do is we want to set this to the max of 180 standstill. So that if standstill frames is hovering at like 260, when a ball goes across, we don't go lower to 180. Um, so that's good. I think there might also be a problem where 
let's say both players grab their balls at the start and then maybe they're learning the controls. How long does it take? Yeah, so here's another situation of at the start of the game, both players grab their balls. They might just be like looking at each other and kind of like looking at the controller and getting used to it. But it counts as a standstill because they they took all they waited all that time for the first ball to spawn. They picked it up, and then they haven't thrown it yet. I think it should take longer for that to count as a standstill. So at the start, pencil frames. Let's set this to. Well, first of all, it doesn't matter what I set it here. I need to set it. When we go to game start, change scene, scene, game start. Whenever something changes the scene to game start, oh yeah, we go to the game change scene method. Else if scene, game end, then game start. No, 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 no. When the game itself proper starts, then we want to set standstill frame. And here's the question. So if the game starts, both players pick up their balls, and they don't do anything, how long should it take for us to ante up two more balls on each side? I think probably a while, because I think human instinct will be the first ball I throw out is going to be mega slow. Anyways, might as well just toss one out. They're probably going to catch it. So I probably can have this be set, set this to two. two. What it was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Checking to make sure everything healthy on the stream. Good. Okay, let's test our game. The mode doesn't really matter right now. So both players pick up their balls. Yay. And then how long does it take for us to spawn two more balls? Ah, that feels right. Maybe the players do. Maybe we have professional players playing my juggle panic game. And then they start start a new match. And they they pick up their first balls. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to wait. Wait for a second ball. And I don't want them to wait. Do Oh. <laughs> and, uh, let's set this to 220. Just setting it based on feelings. Don't have any math in this at all. Just kind of like setting the number, seeing if it feels good, tweaking it, testing it out again. I think that's probably going to be about good. And I don't think there's really a right answer for this. I think most players will just throw their first balls pretty soon after they pick them up. And if they don't, well, what's the, no harm in giving them each two balls to play with at the start of the game, if they want that. And then they could wait for three balls after that if they really wanted to wait a while. Um, so, how many have we covered? If no balls have been thrown across for a bit, if one side is here, spawn a ball, if both sides spawn a ball on each side, we got that. At the start of the game, spawn one ball for each player. If ever there are no balls, spawn two more. Does that work? I think that works. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that looks good. Uh huh. Win the game. Win. Lose, 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 lose. Win, win, win. Lovely. Uh, and then there's this last thing that we need to do for ball spawning. So if some balls have been thrown across recently, spawn a ball every now and then. Hmm. So this is just kind of like an X factor of like uh y'all are throwing and catching balls pretty often. There isn't a standstill or anything. Um you haven't dropped all your balls, so no new balls are spawning, but we're gonna spawn another ball anyways, just to kind of add a little bit of spice to the situation. So let's program that too. Um, how should we program this? 
So if oh, I should also have it where two hundred. Sorry, I'm just checking to. On a ball, if there is a race stand. So the other time we want to reset this, when both players drop their balls, and there's no balls on the screen, then this will trigger, and two more balls will be spawned. And if players pick those up, there's a chance that without this line of code, that time spent with the ball spawning triggered a standstill, and two more balls will spawn right after that. I don't want that to happen. <clears throat> so I'm going to mark this. I'm going to increment that standstill frames when all the balls drop to more spawn. Um, so that a standstill won't be triggered right after this. And that would be hard to test. So I will just assume that it's correct. And then, so now we want to do the thing where if... Two, if both players are just kind of let's let's simulate let's make sure that this is true if both players are just kind of happily throwing a ball back and forth and then we're we're after this going to work on getting this ball to speed up over time as they keep throwing it back and forth but in this case even if the ball are going faster and faster if they're cooperating and they're just kind of like throwing it to each other um I don't want to spice it up. So this will never trigger a standstill because the ball is going across the midpoint pretty frequently. Um, and they're not dropping the ball, so more balls won't be spawned because of having no balls on the screen. Um, so how do we get it so that it's just been a while? It's just been a while since a ball spawned, and we just want to spawn a ball. We just want to spawn a ball. Um, well, we could have... We could have a counter, much like the standstill things, that is just the time since a ball was dropped. And if ever that gets to zero, then you spawn another ball randomly on whatever side. We could do that. But is the time since a ball dropped the right metric? Hmm. I think. No, I think I think it has to be something else. I think it has to be like time since a ball was spawned. If a ball hasn't been spawned in a while, then we want this to trigger. Yeah. Um Let's do local ball spawn frames. Maybe not the best word. Um Occasional. No, that doesn't look right. Occasional? Occasional? Is that right? Checking me? Eh, eh, Google. Occasional. Occasional. Um, whoa. Here we go. So, occasional ball spawn frame. And initialize, we're gonna get that to zero. And then change scene. So when the game starts, we're going to set occasional ball and salt. So if a ball hasn't spawned because of any means for like, let's say, uh, a while, 300 frames. Oh, we can do this. Oh, Spawn ball. And the spawn ball method. So if we, we spawn a ball through any means, then we want to have that occasional ball spawn counter go back up. Occasional ball spawn frames equals 300. Do you do? Do you do? If. If not, if not self, then 
Wah, 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 wah. Sorry, I'm just, this is boring, but I want to get it right. Okay, so if ever one of those ball spawners spawns a ball, then <clears throat> this, this timer we're making that occasionally spawns a ball for no good reason, um, we don't want it to go off. We don't want it to spawn a ball for no reason. We're going to reset occasional ball spawn frames back up to three. And then, so that handles that side of it. And then in update, boop. in our update method, if scene equals game, spawn a ball if ever there is a standstill, spawn a ball every now and then to make things interesting. Um, so occasion ball, counter, occasion ball spawn frames, if ball spawn zero then so um we have this counter that's going down and it gets reset whenever a ball is spawned but if it ever reaches zero then we're going to want to spawn a ball and then that will reset the counter automatically so that's great um why how do we want to spawn this ball do we want to spawn a ball on a random side I wrote in my notes I want to spawn a ball alternating. So every now and then we'll spawn a ball on the left side, then the right side, then the left side, then the right side. But maybe be fitting the game to just spawn it on a random side. I'm just going to do that. So player equals rand int. Give me an int. Give me a random integer that's between one and two inclusive. Get that juggler. Get the juggler corresponding with that. Uh, corresponding with that player num. Get the ball spawner that corresponds to that juggler and spawn a ball there. Just to check. Spawn ball. If it's if the scene is the game scene, which this is. Then even if the ball spanner is already holding a ball, we'll count it as having spawned a ball, which kind of makes sense. That means that a ball hasn't spawned in a while, but I mean, that's because one of the ball spawners is, hasn't been picked up yet. So what are the players doing? Maybe they have tons of balls. They don't need to get more balls. So that's fine. So let's test this. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -doop. So let's get rid of one of these balls and let's just have these players throw a ball back and forth. Ooh, there you go. A ball just spawned randomly, even though it, we were throwing a ball back and forth pretty often. Try it again. That happens a little too, too often. Hmm. Yeah, I think it needs to be higher. Balls. How this be four hundred? Now, uh, get rid of one of these balls. If a ball is being spawned, if a if there's a ball and it's being thrown across it, then this doesn't count as a standstill, so no b balls will spawn because of that. But a ball may spawn randomly anyway. It's happened over here. Whew feels right. It feels about the right amount of time to just kind of add a little intrigue. Yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. Let's let's make it like a 440. Cool. Is there anything else? No. Boom. Did it. All this. Is there anything else we want to do? What if there's a what if a ball spawns and no one picks it up and it's just being there? Well, the thing is in this game, if you if you're kind of moving around and there's a ball on your side of the screen, you're probably gonna pick it up, right? Because you can't really move very far if you don't. Um, 
So the only real reason, if a ball, if there's a ball spawner and it has a ball in it, the only real reason that a player wouldn't pick it up quickly is if uh, they have two balls already. And I think this is the situation where, so now we're in a situation where the game has no mechanics for resolving it, where these are bad ball colors. Um, so where both players are holding two balls in each, well, a ball in each hand, and there's a ball in the ball spawner on each side. So there's three balls on each side. The game can't really, doesn't have a means of kind of like, uh, putting things up and out. It doesn't have a way of kind of like upping the ante from here because the ball spawners are full. The players aren't picking them up. Um, they can't pick them up unless they throw a ball. So this is like a permanent standstill, but all the ball spawners are full. So I think, but I think this is a situation where if the player on the left is holding two balls and has a ball on their spawner and the player on the right has holding two balls and has a ball on their spawner and neither one of them is throwing, throwing their balls, then either they're afk or it's a very tense moment because one player could just go boom 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 and just throw a volley and then the next player has to throw six across and then kind of like heats up and then it's an instant win if the player reacts slowly because it's going to speed up a lot in that circumstance too so i think we probably don't need to do anything to like improve the ball spawning code from there i think we're good doop -a -doop. Yeah, good. Spawn thoughts. Get out of here. We know what we're doing. So I think, what else do we need to do? Well, spawn periodically, depending on circumstances. We did it. Let's commit our code. Terminal. Mm -hmm. Uh cd repos Google panic hit status um so i can see if i do this is git if you're unfamiliar with git and it's what i use for two balls at the start what i use for uh getting my code off my computer so that if i if my computer dies, all my code is somewhere in the cloud. And also, if you want to check out this code, I can post a link in the description, but it's very easy to find. And then you can hack and build your own modifications of this game. So let's see, what do we do? We have ball across the midpoint, blah, 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 blah. Just kind of looking over the diff, diff, the lines of code we wrote to make sure it all makes sense and it's all things I want to commit. Yeah. Okay. Git commit am um ball spawning code yay git push origin master nailed it lovely so now we're at another point. We just did our little 40 minute loop and then we came back and now I need to figure out what the next thing I'm going to work on is. Um, and I have a little to-do list at the start. So balls can collide in midair. That's a good one. Um, sound effects. That's a fun one too. Drawing the title screen. Need to do that. Particle spawn when a ball is dropped. That's an important one. Ball speed gradually increases. That's an important one. Too. Those are the ones that so I want to, right now, if you throw a ball and it lands, it doesn't have like, I want to have like an explosion of like, oh no, like sparks and things that you can kind of use to really get a feeling of like that ball hit the ground and exploded. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but maybe we can hack on that. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you go to our ball class. Let's create a new class. Let's call it ball explosion or well, let's call it ball poof ball poof um we want a draw method F, F, draw fine seven let's do that let's set just a width and a height 
for now. And that's good enough. And then when a ball hits the ground, so this is the code, balls that hit the ground die. This is the code that controls that. So self die, we want to spawn entity. Ball poof. Where do we want to spawn a ball poof? Right at this ball position. Let's try it out. Okay. So there's our little ball poof. It's buried underground because that's where the ball was. So I think rather than spawning the ball poof at self.y, I actually want let's ball poof. It's y will always be the ground y minus the height. So I want when a ball hits the ground, I want like a little poof effect, but I want it to be above ground, not somewhere hidden above it. That, boom, boom. You can see that little rectangle is where we're drawing our ball poof. It's not that interesting, so we need to do something. We need to draw something more interesting there. Um, so I could either have particles coming out of it, or we could draw a little like poof and like in our sprite sheet, put it there. I think particles might be a better way to go. So let's do this. Update. Let's have each ball poof be, so we have an init, an update, and a draw method for a poof. <laughs> Sorry, I lost track of my thoughts. Um, we have an init, update, and a draw method for our poof. Let's have it be self.particles. Let's have an array of particles. Um, and for, let's create some particles. For i equals 1, 10, 2. Create 10 particles, add particles. x equals self dot x, y equals self dot y. I don't know what the particles will look like yet, but that's a start. For each self dot particles function particle and you set particle dot x particle dot y. Let's make it pink. So um, whenever a ball poof is created, which is the effect when a ball hits the ground, you can see that here. I'll throw some more balls and there'll be more ball poofs. Right now it's just a white rectangle. Um, when a ball poof is created, we'll create 10 particles that are just not even randomly positioned. Let's say update. Let's just do for each function. For each self dot particles function. Particle. Yes. I'm surprised I had this much this this much energy because I spent the uh, the morning doing jury duty, which was super duper draining. Particle x plus equals ran. Let's just let's just have it be random lockers. Um, luckily, or unluckily, I was starting to enjoy myself. I'm gonna have these be fun. They're gonna move pretty fast. Um, jury duty got canceled because New York City is getting a crazy blizzard tomorrow, apparently. Which is funny because it's so nice today. Where is my particles? Why are my particles not there? Let's do this. Plus. Where'd my particle go? Add particles. No, self dot particles. Uh oh, is that why? Let's not update them. So we should have some particles in like a grid-like pattern. Um, yay! There's my little pink poofs. Let's have it be a color that's a little easier. Let's have it be dark blue. Uh, yeah, I, I had jury duty. They let us out because 
gonna be a crazy blizzard tomorrow and it would be unconscious unconscionable Un it would be rude to ask us to yeah look at those little random walkers that's not it looks like there's little fleas like buzzing over a corpse so that's not the effect we want for our particles but just just guaranteeing that everything is working we're drawing we're updating blah 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 um but it's it's funny because like i don't know i feel like the fact that the law was just like thwarted by a bit of snow i mean i guess i guess it's very reasonable people are in some hard times just the last blizzard so I think part, part of what's going wrong, one, this random walking code is very ugly. I don't want random walkers. They do look like a little buzzing flies. So that's bad. I want them. I think I want like a geyser sheet. Kind of like sparks and stuff. So let's do let's do that. And then we also want Let's make the poof the same size of the ball so it's in the spot. Local center x center y equals self that. So. <laughs> Let's find the, the middle of our poof. And that's where we'll spawn our. Ooh, actually, I don't want to. I want to spawn the particles from the bottom middle of our poof. So basically where the ball hit the ground, I want to geyser particles. So I actually want this to be self dot y plus self dot height. Get at the bottom and this I actually want actually do want it to be that's where our particles will originate from. And then we'll give these a VX equals zero. So they're not moving horizontally at all. We'll give them a VY of, if we want them to shoot upwards, let's do negative one. So their VY, their Y coordinate will go negative, which is up in game world. Then we'll do particle dot X plus particle dot V. Zero. Bum, 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 bum. So yeah, look at that. It just looks like one particle, but that's only because they're all stacked on each. So we need to change that too. Um, let's have it be rind on minus five rind. So let's let's generate random numbers for let's say the vx coordinate when we create these particles. We wanted to like burst into a shower. Let's say that. Uh, these particles are going to be moving and they'll be moving some amount left or right and they'll be moving some speed up and down. Ooh. Let's do negative one minus. Just kind of the. Then I want there to be a little bit of gravity applied to these, which we'll do by every frame well add a positive amount to amount to the vertical y velocity that's what by is velocity y or vertical velocity so if you add a positive amount to it every frame that's equivalent to a downwards acceleration balls whoa <laughs> that's less a geyser of sparks and more just like a little little poof of dirt as they hit the ground. Not really the look I'm going for. Doesn't look that good. Also, I want these two frames to death. I want these to go away after a bit. So I have, I can just, I have this instrumented so that if I set a frames to death on any entity, it will automatically die after that many frames. So 50 is one and two thirds seconds. So that doesn't look too good. Clearly what we need to do is make this make this go faster upward. Mm -hmm. I actually want that ball spot to happen faster. 
Hey, that's looking better. More of a shower. Not quite what I want yet. Let's do this. Let's have a debug mode. Local debug mode is true. Then go to our ball spawner. Uh, let's say local spawn speed ternary. So if we're in debug mode, I want these to come up super quick. Otherwise, we can do it at the normal pace. Spawn speed. Here. Um, frames live equals turn. Ternary debug mode. If we're in debug mode, spawn them much quicker. Why? Why? Why not happen? <laughs> That's pretty good. Just making it easy for me to. So if it's less than 30, it doesn't spawn, which I think is because during that. Yeah, I think I know why that is. So, uh huh. Okay, so now the ball spawned much faster. Then spawn even more, more quickly. I also wanted to start on the. Game screen. Let's go to init. I don't want it to. I don't want it to. Yeah. So if if we're in debug mode, if debug mode, then. Change. Let's just start by this. Let's change scene to title to game. So now when I start, it should automatically drop in. Let's change. Bum, 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 bum. Let's change the camera. So we're going to change this to, to camera operator dot y equals. Sure. What? Uh, great. And then last thing, let's go back to that ball, ball spawner. Equals. Let's go to the ball spawner class. Let me see if now I can. Yes. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, great. So now I can test and without having to like load. Also, let's just have it be. Let's have these balls travel quick. Boom. Whoops. Whoops. Boom. Yeah, still doesn't look good. What do I need to do? get let's go to that where was i doing there we go let's do this local speed equal two uh-huh so i want it to be let's get kind of like a basis for about how about the direction I want these direction and kind of like travel arc I want each of these particles to have is let's do one five four let's try to get this right so these will all be going up the same same vertical distance. So I think I want I want the the particles to have a bit more gravity to them. It means that we're going to want to increase. 
probably gonna boom even more pump it up boom probably boom this right I think that's about right Oops, sorry. Boom. Okay. So then I want this to be not just the same level. I want this to be dependent on the speed. Speed times that number. So let's do times speed. And I can. There we go. And let's have speed be. In just let's just have it be let's see what this looks like let's have more particles 100 boom a little too noisy let's see what let's see what so this is this is the same thing or yep that open five so now I'm just trying to figure out the range of the speed that I want. Might be dropping a little fast. 2.8, that's good. 1.5. Boom. Okay, so between, let's do 0.8, is that what it was? 0 0.8 plus 0 point print. Do do do. Boom. God, that looks. Ooh, that looks not so good. Or let's see. Oh. It just looks so dirty. Okay, here's here's part of why. I'm just setting the. I'm just setting a pixel. So in draw, we're doing P set on each particle. And that's not, that's going to mean that these things are all squares, but I don't think I want them to all be squares. I think I want them to be like spark looking. Sparks are kind of like lines. So I think I need to draw lines. So particle.retrieveX equals particle.x. RetrieveY. Let's just do it like this. I can fix it later. Particle. Now I'm silly. I'm sorry. Don't repeat, kids. Local x y equals boom. Boom boom. 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 The stream is entirely me making car noises as I program. Welcome. Boom. Okay. Oh, particle X now should be pre prev X prev Y, and then instead of P set, I want it to be line from particle dot prev X particle dot prev particle dot prev Y particle X particle dot Y one. Let's do seven. Sparks are more white. Hmm, that looks better. Hmm. I feel like they should fan out a little. Two, two, one. Boom. Hmm. Second thoughts on. Boom. Oh, it was good when it was a little bit fast. Hmm. Want it to be a little bit higher. I want the minimum to be a little bit higher. So I need this to increase this and decrease this by the same amount. Hmm.
That's a start. Uh, one thing we can do is when we make a ball poof, color equals self dot color. We can have it be the same color as the ball that created it. So when a ball poof is created, I'm passing in the color. So then that means down here, instead of doing white, I can do self dot color. Orange, yellow, boom. Don't know how I feel. Hmm. What can we do to make it more interesting? What if we? Oh, that's actually more interesting. I like it when they kind of just went guy. Is there a way I can guarantee that they'll eat guy? Yes. If I find the lowest number with off the screen. Not that. Uh. Great, so O point A or ten. Boom. So what I want. Let's have him fan out more. Sorry. Not that much. Five. This would look better if there's more? Probably not. Nope. Less? Fewer? There's not really. Is there a corollary between. So that we have less and fewer in the. We have something for more. We have like something for more that is discrete versus. I don't think we do. Well, at least you can tell when it happened. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to five. This just makes it six. I'm adding half a pixel onto each of these values because just due to pixel position roundings, I kind of that's how I want it to work. But I, no one will ever notice. This being hmm two bam bam oh I like that it goes up because then uh. Uh. hmm. Yeah, we'll stick with it. We'll do that for now. Ball poof. Ball poof. One thing I want to do, I want to make sure that it's rendered in the proper layer. So also, I want to get rid of that evil, evil rectangle. Boop. Um, I want to make sure that this is this ball poof is rendered pretty much behind everything else. Like, I don't want these sparks to appear on top of the player. That would be wrong. I don't even want them to appear on top of balls. So I think I want them to be the most, most background. So let me just render there. Oops. Let's do all poof. All poof is the lowest render layer. Update priority, it does not matter. All poof. Do that. Ball poof. Ball poof equals update priority. 
update priority is um, a concept specific to this game and games that I create that refers to which entities in the game update first. Like in this game, balls need to update before players so that a ball can move and the player can catch the ball after it's moved. Um, doesn't matter too much for these because these little sparks, this ball poof, just make it ball sparks. I like the name ball poof. Ball sparks. Are there more sparks? Um, it doesn't matter the order that this updates rel relative to other entities because doo -doo -doo. well, because it doesn't interact with anything else. It's not like I need uh, this, these sparks to update before the player because otherwise collision detection will be up because they don't do anything. And then, whoops, yeah. Um, render layer zero, um, I have it organized so that um, entities with higher render layers are, are rendered on top of entities with lower render layers. So the fact that this ball sparks entity has entity class has a render layer of zero means that it is below everything else. And you can see I'm just keeping comments of the the order that things are rendered. So ball sparks are rendered under um, like the balls and those are rendered under the juggler. So those are what those are what those context of this game. Um, cool. Well, I think let's just commit that. Ooh, let's get this off our chip. Particles. Boom. Got some particles. Ooh, let's check our diff. Ball sparks. Ball sparks. Ball sparks. We added debug mode too. Let's get that. Git commit am added particles and dropping ball and added debug mode. Debug mode. Debug mode. There we go. Git push origin. Sick business. Okay, so that's like two two things that we completed today. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this late night stream. I think I'm probably going to go to bed now because I'm on jury duty timing. And I need to preserve my energy for the big old blizzard that's going to hit tomorrow and make my apartment very, very cold because it's very, very poor heating. So thanks so much for watching. I will put links in the description to the GitHub stuff, the... Death by Audio Arcade event that's happening on March 9th that this will be showcased at. Um, but thanks so much. Have a good one. Bye.